In this brief lecture, we're going to look at monetary policy, and in particular, how the Federal Reserve in the United States controls the money supply with four key tools. Recall that the Federal Reserve in the United States has three key functions. It serves as a nation's central bank. It is designed to oversee or regulate and help maintain the well-being of the banking system. And finally, it also controls the quantity of money in the economy. In other words, it conducts monetary policy. When it comes to monetary policy, the United States Federal Reserve has four key tools for controlling the money supply. It can conduct open market operations, change the discount rate, alter reserve requirements, and manipulate the interest rate it pays banks for holding on to reserves. Let's look at each of these in reverse order. First up then is interest paid on reserves. As interest paid on reserves goes up, banks will hold on to more money. They are getting paid to hold on to money. And thus the money supply will decrease. Banks will instead be holding on to that money. So if the Federal Reserve is conducting monetary policy and they would like the money supply in the economy to decrease, they could increase the interest paid on reserves. The next tool is changing the reserve requirements. This is setting the fraction of assets that banks must hold on to as reserves, vault cash or deposits with the Fed, against their checking deposits. And so when we change the reserve requirement, this will impact the money supply, and hence we can call this monetary policy. So when the Fed lowers the re required reserve ratio, it creates excess reserves for those commercial banks. They are no longer required to hold on to as much money. This allows them to extend additional loans and it expands the money supply. So if we lower the reserve re requirement, then we create excess reserves and this expands the money supply. Obviously raising the reserve requirement would actually have the opposite effect then. So if we raised the reserve requirement and told banks that they hold, had to hold on to a bunch of the money, they had to have it on them or on reserve with the Fed, then what we would end up with is a decrease in the money supply. And so this is another way that the Fed can conduct monetary policy. Not a common one, but it is one of their tools that they have at their disposal. Next up is altering the discount rate. The discount rate is the interest rate that the Fed loans funds to commercial banks for. So commercial banks and other depository institutions, if they ever need a loan kind of as a last resort, they can go to the Fed and the Fed will charge them an interest rate. And that interest rate is called the discount rate. And so the Fed can change the money supply by altering this discount rate. The discount rate is the interest rate that the Fed charges banking institutions. This is fairly closely related to the interest rate called the federal funds rate, or the, this comes from the federal funds market. The federal funds market is a private loanable funds market where banks with excess reserves extend short-term loans to other banks trying to meet their reserve requirements. So the first step for banks really is to go to the federal funds market to try and take, get a loan from another bank. So there's this federal funds rate that banks are charging each other in this private loanable funds market. So bank to bank. But if they cannot get funds from the federal funds market and they have to turn to the Federal Reserve, they will be charged the discount rate. So we have a federal funds rate, that's the bank to bank rate, and then the discount rate, the bank getting a loan from the Federal Reserve. So the interest rate that is in the market where it's bank to bank is the federal funds rate. The interest rate where it's from the Federal Reserve to the banks is called the discount rate. Now, under operating procedures that were adopted in around 2003, the Fed charges most banks a discount rate that is slightly higher than the federal funds rate. So this is kind of confusing because the Federal Reserve charges the discount rate and it's slightly higher than the federal funds rate. So the Fed sounds like it should be charging the federal funds rate, but it's not. That's the bank to bank rate. 
the Fed is charging banks the discount rate. And what they do is they set that rate at a slightly higher rate than that federal funds rate. What they want is for banks to go to other banks first, but then only as a last resort, churn to the Federal Reserve. So how do we use the discount rate to conduct monetary policy? If the Fed wanted to reduce the supply of money, it could increase the differential between the discount and federal funds rates. A decrease in the differential between the federal funds rate and the discount rate would have an opposite effect. It would increase the supply of money. As a question to kind of get you thinking, do you understand what's happening here with monetary policy? Ask yourself, why would an increase in the differential between the federal funds rate and the discount rate reduce the supply of money? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer here. All right, so if we have an increase in the differential, what's gonna happen is banks are going to recognize that, hey, we could always turn to other banks and get the federal funds rate. And then as a last resort, we could turn to the Federal Reserve and we could be charged the discount rate. Now, if the difference between those two is very, very small, you say, hey, you know, we can always get the discount rate, right? So I can get this loan from other banks, hey, fine. And if that doesn't work, my last resort, I can turn to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is always there. It's always there for me. And so that's not gonna be a very high rate. If we reduce that differential, it's like, yeah, okay, there's not that high of rate that I am getting charged relative to what other banks are currently charging me. And so I'm willing to kind of extend a whole lot of loans if there's a very small differential. I'm willing to kind of be aggressive with the loans that I send out because even if I end up in a situation where I myself need to take a loan to meet my requirements, it's not that big a deal. I could always turn to other banks and even if other banks can't meet it, boom, I can just turn to the Fed. But if we increase the differential between the federal funds rate and the discount rate, then what happens is I have to be kind of worried that I can't meet my requirements because now there's this really high cost because the discount rate is going to be much higher than the federal funds rate. It's going to be a big differential there. And so I have to be worried that I get to the point where I have to ask the Federal Reserve to borrow some money at the discount rate. So an increase in this differential between the discount rate and the federal funds rate would cause me to be more cautious as a bank and not loan as much money out, and thus it would reduce the money supply. Our fourth and final key tool for the Federal Reserve's conduction of monetary policy is open market operations. This is the buying and selling of U.S. government securities on the open market. It's the buying and selling of US Treasury bonds by the Fed. Now, every now and then we end up seeing the Federal Reserve buying other types of uh, assets or securities, but the traditional approach is buying and selling US Treasury bonds. So this is the primary tool used by the Federal Reserve to control the money supply. We want to note here that US Treasury bonds held by the Fed are a part of the national debt. But we want to make sure that we understand this difference between the Fed and the Treasury. So what is the difference between the Fed and the Treasury? The United States Treasury is concerned with the finance of the federal government. It issues the bonds to the general public in order to finance any budget deficits that the federal government is engaging in it does not determine the money supply. The Treasury is all worried about the United States budget and it issues Treasury bonds in order to fund that deficit, to fund the government spending that takes place. The Federal Reserve, on the other hand, is concerned with the monetary climate of the economy. It's not issuing the bonds, but it's buying and selling these bonds. It's determining the money supply and it's concerned with the monetary climate 
And so it's buying and selling these bonds in order to alter how much money is in the economy. So these bonds already exist because the treasury has put them out there, but at times the Fed will buy some of those bonds or it will take some of the bonds it's previously bought and sell them. So the bonds are issued by the US Treasury, but then bought and sold by the Federal Reserve in order to conduct monetary policy. When the Fed buys bonds, the money supply expands. So if the Fed buys bonds, what the Fed does is it pulls bonds out of the economy in exchange for cash. So the individuals who used to have the bonds, who are now selling them, they're acquiring cash from the Federal Reserve. When more people have cash in their hands, bank reserves increase, and it puts banks in position to expand the money supply even more through the extension of additional loans because of fractional reserve banking. When the Fed sells bonds that it already has, the money supply contracts. Bond buyers give their money up and now just have bonds, right? So the Fed is taking money out of the economy. The bond buyers give the Fed money and now they have bonds, but there's less money in the economy. In this situation, bank reserves decline and it causes them to extend fewer loans. And with fractional reserve banking, we could see that this could reduce the money supply quite a bit. All right, so there we have monetary policy and in the United States, how the Federal Reserve uses four key tools for controlling the money supply, changing the reserve requirements, conducting open market operations, altering the discount rate and manipulating the interest rate it pays banks for holding on to reserves. For the next video, click on the thumbnail here and you'll continue on in this lecture series.